Um, how short are you of officers from your normal complement, and and what is what is not being done because of that? About 126 to 140 is is where we're at currently. Uh, we use overtime resources to make sure that. Uh, when we don't have the staffing, we can bring back officers on an overtime basis to assist with that. Recruiting is a very heavy focus of what we're trying to do right now. Just about every police department in the region is experiencing similar challenges with that. It's also what makes recruiting challenging is because it's a very competitive environment with, uh, with other agencies. We've actually started to give a $20,000 signing bonus to have people become police officers. Because we just instituted that, we've already seen an increase in our applications that are coming through, which is good news. Back to the SRO issue. So the decision of whether to have SROs is not something that the council can legislatively mandate because that's not how the law reads. It is a decision that is left to the school board. Number of calls for service to a school as well as calls for service in and around the school community. Those are both factors that that lend heavily toward a need for having SROs back in the building and reducing the time to response. I know we are uh, less than 48 hours away from the legalization of cannabis in the state of Maryland. Um, and the state did release some information today, what you can do, what you can't do, definitely still does not allow for com cannabis consumption in public, period. Everybody pretty much knows what the standard is for impairment with alcohol. What is it with cannabis? We're talking about driving under the influence of either alcohol or drugs. Anytime that there is a suspicion of driving under the influence or driving while impaired, that officer is going to administer a standardized battery of field sobriety tests that are applicable to both alcohol and drugs. Thank you for coming out tonight.